What's up, everybody? So it's another week gone by, so it's time for another guide. And this week we're covering Austria. The reason why I'm covering Austria is kind of simple. I am in the process of researching a Georgia start, but that's taking a bit too much time. And, well, since I have limited time this week, I'm just going to make an Austria guide, because I play them all the time. I play them for fun in my off time. So it's not like I need to do a whole lot of research for Austria. Now, before I get into how I play and how I recommend other people play, I do want to bring up another playstyle that was recently covered by The Playmaker on YouTube. And I'll link his channel in the description of this video below, as well as try to remember to card his video above, so if anybody wants to see his video, you can. But just to summarize, what he basically recommends is that you attack Lorraine and Provence up here, and you take Lorraine and Barois. And then you take the, from these two provinces, you can take Dijonet into Burgundy. This will force their capital to move from Dijonet into Salines. And it will every time from my testing. The problem is I don't recommend doing this. You're going to take quite a bit of aggressive expansion with everybody in the French region and then a lot of people in Germany to take these provinces. And the thing is, is that all of this is to increase your imperial authority growth, which is nice. Just one problem. If you look at the mathematics here, you're only getting like 0 .005 points for every one province that is in control of somebody not in the empire. And if you actually count the amount of provinces Burgundy owns that it's not in the empire, it's six. So you're taking all of this aggressive expansion for 0 .03 imperial authority growth per month. And while, yeah, that will take up over 50 some odd years, to actually mean something, it's probably not worth the early aggressive expansion because that will stop you or slow you down from taking Bohemia, Hungary, or potentially make you fight a coalition for, say, Milan or anybody else. So while you can do it, I don't really recommend doing it, to be quite honest. But it is completely up to you, and I believe in freedom of choice. So let's go ahead and get this started. And just to say it, because I just realized that I kind of have to do Austria now because of Victor von Habsburg up here. And I think that's pretty funny. And of course, the first topic we're going to cover is the estates and privileges. We have religious diplomats, supremacy of the crown, patronage of the arts, burger financial demand. These are the normal things. And you have the monarch point privileges over here. And then I also granted the advisor cost privileges. Yes, this does increase your stability cost modifier, but it does make it cheaper to hire advisors. And you actually kind of have the economy being a major power of doing so as long as you stay as the emperor. So, very nice thing to do. Now, first things first, you're going to maintain your army and get them ready to actually be able to fight. But once you have that done, you can then look at your advisors and find who might be more valuable to you. So for right now, I'm not hiring any, but the ones that I would generally look for is morale of armies at a level one. And then you have the diplomatic reputation at level one, which is just lovely that I don't have one. And then in here, generally it's yearly inflation or tax income. The reason why tax income is still nice is because you have a lot of it. So having any tax modifiers tend to pay for themselves as you play the game. But with that being done, let's get these armies moved down. We're going to take our navy here, just merge them up and mothball them because we're not going to need them for a while. And now let's turn to our diplomacy. Now at the start of the game, the first person you're going to do anything with is Poland, and they are, you are going to ally. The fact is, is that Poland, while being a bit unusual as an ally, will generally help you against the Ottomans, against Hungary if you need to attack them, against Bohemia if you're struggling, etc. The next person you're going to be going for is Burgundy if you can. If they start off rivaled to you, obviously you can attack them, make them break the rivalry, and then you can improve relations and try and ally them. But again, they might have trust issues. But you're still okay. If you really don't want to deal with that and you're worried about losing the Burgundian inheritance, you can just restart the game. It's not important enough for me to generally do so, and it's about a third chance that they will rival you, but it's up to you. In this case, go ahead and just royal marry them and then go for Castile or Aragon, depending on who hates France more. As you can see, Aragon does not hate France. Castile hates France, so I'm going to go for them instead because I'm going to eventually have to fight France. Once my diplomats come back, I'm going to ally with Hungary because they can always be useful, and then I'm going to pick two electors to ally. That should get me up 
a little bit above, of course, my Diplo point mount, but I can fix that later. For now, it's probably going to be Brandenburg, because Brandenburg's always useful to have, and then potentially Cologne or Saxony. But we will find that out. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause it, get my allies all set up, and I will bring you guys back to talk further once I have it all set up and to discuss any decisions I made. See you then. And welcome back, everybody. So I wanted to take the time to actually set up to get ready to attack Bohemia. So it's a couple of years later. But I wanted to show you that, yes, I do have quite an alliance chain here. And that has put me really over my Diplo slot limit. The reason why is because I pretty much allied every single elector except the Palatinate and Bohemia. The Palatinate because I know I will Royal Mary them the moment I ally them because I will just not pay attention and click the button, and Bohemia because I'm obviously going to attack them. And I understand that some people might look at this and say, well, you shouldn't ally this many people, you're losing all these points, just don't ally these three guys here. The thing is, is that you get a lot of favors really quickly with them. I mean, as you can see here, insanely quickly when you're allied to them. So, by using this, you're going to be able to get that mission done a lot sooner. You can then use them when you attack Bohemia, because you can use calling them in with favors. So, now that I'm ready to do that, I'm going to go ahead and hire both the Grand Company and the Independent Army, because they can take the brunt of most of the damage, while all these other guys flood them and get them weakened and taken down that way. And be aware, you can declare the war and call these guys in up to three years later. If you allied Burgundy at the start, that's usually you're usually capable of getting them to come in if you're struggling, but obviously you don't necessarily want to. And Poland, they're a couple of years later, so if you want to, spend time currying favors with them since the game start, and you'll be able to call Poland in, and then Bohemia will not stand a chance if you don't want to do this instead. Though I still recommend doing this because it's just easier to. Now, as far as a general, of course, you're going to have at least one of them hired up. It doesn't really matter if he's any good. Just put him in charge of one of the armies and get ready to attack. So I'm going to go ahead and get my armies on the border, get the morale up, and then attack. And I will see you guys once this war is over. And yeah, you're going to be losing a little bit of money at the start. Again, that's why you try not to use uh, your money on advisors at this point. It's just not really that worth it. So I'll see you guys in just a second. And welcome back, everybody. So a couple things. First off, I realize that now that I forgot to set my focus to military points at the start of the game, you really want to do this. You start off focused on admin, and you only have one military point. So if you don't at least set it to not be focused on admin, it's as if you have zero. So you're going to fall behind in military tech if you don't at least stop focusing on admin. I'd recommend focusing on military so at least you're able to have some advantage in future techs. But right now, obviously I forgot to do that. It's going to make my life a little more difficult, but hopefully not too much. Now let's talk about this peace deal. For the most part, with everybody else in the Empire, you're going to want to have them spit out any extra tags. So take any money, take war reps. But if you see that there's an ability to release nations, take it every single time. The reason why is kind of simple. Every single tag that you have in the HRE improves the imperial authority growth that you get. As long as they're Catholic, and since the Reformation hasn't started yet, they're all Catholic. So it's beneficial for you to do this. Now, do not use Return Core, because that doesn't help you at all. It makes the person receiving it obviously happy, but who cares? Second, let's talk about Bohemia. Now, obviously, we're going to take them as a personal union. But whenever you take somebody as a personal union, if you can't get their opinion into the positive before your ruler dies, you're obviously going to lose that union. And you don't want to deal with that. So before you piece them out, there is a chance that they will be rivaled to somebody that you don't mind insulting, such as the Teutonic Order. If that is the case, scornfully insult that rival and you get 25 opinion. And that could actually end up saving you being able to keep them in some situations. Otherwise, take the Union, take Prague, take 5% war score with the money, and piece them out. If you are in multiplayer or you're playing a game where you have no intention of forming the Empire, 
take the gold mine instead. Prague is better suited for you in multiplayer games or if you're forming the Empire because you'll have the increase in Imperial Authority growth modifier here that can get pretty high up if you're willing to sink the money into it. But obviously if you're not forming the Empire or you're flipping Protestant or you're playing in a multiplayer game where they're never going to let you form the Empire, yeah, there's no point to Prague. You might as well just embrace it and go with the gold mine instead. But here... Obviously, Prague is going to be worthwhile, so I'm going to take it. I'm going to core it as soon as I possibly can. And as you can see, there is Hussite here, so you're probably going to have to embrace Czech culture. And then you're going to have to take some privilege to increase your conversion speed. But you should be able to convert it. Just be aware, it is still a nightmare to do so because right here, Religious Center, it makes it really hard to do so. So just keep an eye on that and you'll be fine. With that being said, it's now time to turn to other things. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on Italy. So let's talk about that. The Shadow Kingdom allows everybody in Italy to end up leaving the Empire in about 20, 30 years of game start. Now, obviously, it's not happening yet, but you do have to keep in mind that that is a potential issue that you're going to come across. And the people you have to worry about you simply have to come in here and look at Rain in Italy, and everybody that you need to worry about is going to be flashing. What it requires is either you to be allied to them, have, I believe it's 150 opinion, it's, it's been a bit, yeah, 150 opinion, they have to have the free city reform, which means you just make them a free city, or they've lost to you in a war. All that requires is that they personally have lost by at least one war score to you in some war against something. They don't have to be the primary war leader. If you separate piece them out for one war score, you're fine. So in this case, releasing Pisa is actually a slight problem because now they are also on this list. And I need to make certain they will remain in the Empire and rein in all of them. So that is now what your focus is going to be. So the one person you can actually get a goal on is Ferrara. Everyone else, you have to either hope to go after them later on, such as Milan, when this guy dies, you can get a war goal to personal union them, or you have to ally, improve relations, etc. So simply go through here and see who is going to be a target that you can ally, that you're going to attack, or that you're going to have to make into a free city, etc. The free city ones are best going to be Luca, Siena, and in this case, potentially Pisa. However, obviously, in order to do that, you're going to have to revoke the free city status that you grant up here to somebody. So that will also cost you Imperial Authority. So if you're going to do that, plan ahead and have it done early so you're not worried about it. With that being said, I'm going to take some time and figure out exactly how I'm going to deal with Italy, but I'll see you guys in just a few minutes. Oh, and I just want to point out, don't think you have to reign in Italy. The reason why is because if you get down enough of these, as you can see here, gives a cause as belli on non-members bordering the empire to force them to join. You can allow the people in Italy to leave the empire and then use that to force them back in. It costs you aggressive expansion, but you gain just flat imperial authority based on their development. The thing is, is that they cannot have over, I believe, it's 80 development. I might be wrong on that number, but I believe that's the number. Once they're over 80 development, it's no longer available as a war goal. So they have to be smaller targets. So if there are large people in Italy, you'll have to attack them, make them release smaller tags, and then attack those smaller tags to force them into the Empire. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. And welcome back, everybody. So as you can see, I have a certain event because a certain empire became the Latin Empire. And basically you have two choices here. Either you can join all the defensive wars of the Latin Empire, or you can just not. Obviously, just look in here and see who they're actually fighting. In this case, I'd be defending against Athens, against the Ottomans, and the Venetians. The good news is, is that, well, a lot of other people join too. So obviously, I don't necessarily have to join, but I might as well. In this case, yeah, let's just go ahead and do it just to make sure the Ottomans get pushed down a few pegs. But I'm not actually going to send any troops. I'm going to focus on fighting Ferrara, because why not? But I just wanted to point out, just make sure you actually check to see if everybody else joins, because in my experience, 
Sometimes they don't. And the last thing you need to be doing right now is fighting the Ottomans for somebody else's benefit where you're not going to get anything and you're being destroyed in the process too. So, yeah, the Ottomans can, can go suck an egg. With that being said, I'll see you guys soon. What's up, everybody? So for this week, I'm giving away a CD key that I was really, really tempted to use myself. It's for Shipbreaker. If you want a copy of this game, leave a comment below that includes the word Breaker somewhere in there. At the end of the week, I'll look at all the comments, and I'll pick one at random, and I'll reply to it with the CD key. But be sure you turn on your notifications. There have been people that have seen it before the person I responded to does, and if they see it first, that's their CD key, not yours. So make sure you turn on notifications so it doesn't get taken from you. With that being said, let's get back to the guide. And welcome back, everybody. So I have a diet issue going on, specifically will the Teutonic Order join the Empire? Just do whatever one will give you the most Imperial authority. This will likely push me over the 50 limit, but if that's what happens, make sure you use your Imperial authority either by revoking free city status in Germany and giving it to people in Italy, or by bestowing Imperial grace on people that you want to improve your relations with, such as people in Italy. So that way you can rein them all in. Or, hopefully, my ruler will die before then, allowing me to get the 10 from that and not have to waste Imperial Authority. Now, I will point this out. By 1455, you should know whether or not Hungary is going to fall under a personal union. It's going to entirely depend on whether or not they replace Ladislaus. You don't automatically get the, in, the inheritance now. If they keep Ladislaus and they don't replace him, you will get him once Ladislaus is also on your throne. So if you don't get it immediately, don't panic. You will eventually get it, it's just not immediate. So you actually have to wait until that's the same guy. These are the same guys. So, just keep that in mind. With that being said, I'll see you guys in a little bit. And welcome back, everybody. So the Shadow Kingdom diet issue has finally popped up. This will cost you Imperial Authority to do this. So you're going to lose 10 Imperial Authority, so if you have low Imperial Authority like I do now, make sure you go through Italy and anybody you haven't bestowed Imperial Grace on, make sure you bestow Imperial Grace on them just to improve their relations just a little bit, because it might help. Other than that, just try and keep it down, and obviously, if you have it, usurp the electorate from Bohemia. This will destroy the opinion, so don't do this early, but this will make it so you have less issues getting people to vote for you, because, well... You're now not in control of an elector, you are an elector. And just permanently vote for yourself and you'll be fine. But, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and keep going because I need to get a couple more guys because Milan just won't die. So I'm going to have to get a couple more and then I could raid it Italy. And you have until 1490 to do this. So it's not like you're trying to play beat the clock. Also, if you marry Castile, there is an event where you will get a Habsburg on their throne. If you control the lowlands at the time, it costs you the lowlands to do this. So if you have a royal marriage with them at the start, it makes it easier for you to get it without eventually costing the lowlands from them. So I do recommend allying Castile early, but if they're friends with France and Aragon is not, it might be worth it to go with Aragon instead. With that being said, see you soon. And welcome back, everybody. So to make it go by a little bit faster, I allied Milan and... Roll married Bologna in order to get myself able just to click this button. As you can see here, it will make this event fire. You gain 25 Imperial Authority, which gets you a lot closer. Now, I do want to point something out, specifically the Teutonic Order. I completely forgot about this because now that you can't have them join, but Nanzig might still fire. Because they are now in the Empire, all this land can be considered Imperial. So if it gets taken by Poland, not by Danzig, but by Poland in particular, it is still Imperial land. So just keep that in mind that it might make it so you lose a bit of Imperial authority growth. It's not substantial, but just be aware that it could happen. But with that being said, I've now reigned in the Italians, so I can now stop focusing down here, and the Pope should join. But that might take some time, but I can finally move on from that. And as you can see, I have way too many people taking up slots so I'm going to have to be breaking some of them such as Milan because I really don't want to be dealing with that and I will take the stability hit 
just so I can end up breaking this royal marriage because I don't want to be having it tie up a slot. With that being said, time to move on and it's time to start looking at France. So, give me a minute. You see, France by this time should have taken out Provence unless you've intervened trying to keep them alive, and you really shouldn't. The reason why is because Provence owns Verdun. Verdun is imperial territory, which means that I can go after them since they own Imperial Territory and they're not in the Empire, and I can call in all of my friends, making this pretty easy. And you want this to be this way, because now you're the war goal leader, but as you can see, I can conquer Verdun, and that allows me to skip over everybody else and be able to get into France and start messing with France, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. But if you look here, Brandenburg, they don't want to join the war. By this point, you should have plenty of favors to be able to call up somebody by just improving trust. So if you see anybody not willing to, make sure you go in here and just trade favors for trust. Don't trade them all, of course, but that should make it so he's a lot more willing to join. And as you can see, yep, cruel or not, he still loves me. And now I have a 2 to 1 advantage against them, and I don't probably even really have to show up. So I'm going to go ahead and declare this, and it's time to put France in their place. Now, what I'm aiming to do is take Verdun, probably release Provence, or at least release Bar and then Provence separately. And then I want to try and take some Champagne cores. This will allow me to start expanding, and I can start taking the cores throughout all of France. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. See you guys in a bit. And welcome back. So I completely forgot, you actually can't take land unless it's an imperial territory. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some money, I'm releasing Provence in all of its glory, and Champagne, but I'm not going to have France be taken out completely. I want them to still remain somewhat of a threat. The reason why is I want the Provence tag, as well as Champagne, to feel in some danger. By having them feel some danger, they are more likely to join the HRE willingly, which will also give me Imperial Authority. So I'm going to go ahead and do this rough form because I need to, and then I'm going to move on. But as you can see, France has been relatively crippled. Now I'm going to go after Denmark up here because they also own Imperial territory, and I'm going to be attacking them. And it looks like since they're fighting Sweden right now in their independence war, England won't even back them up. So, again, using my allies, even though some of them are quite small, and I'm going to have them do most of the fighting. So, while they go to do that, I'll be focusing on other things. As you can see, still haven't had my ruler die yet, so he's still, still going. Which means I don't have hunger yet, so I'm still waiting on that. See you guys in a bit. And welcome back, everybody. So as you can see, I am in a couple more wars. And on top of that, Burgundy has taken the opportunity to take out both Champagne and is now taking out Provence because, well, they didn't join the Empire fast enough, so I don't really care. Now what I'm going to be doing with Denmark here is I am making them release Holstein, and they will become a prince in the Empire, but I am taking Schleswig for myself. I'm also taking as much money as I possibly can because... I'm using this province to be able to get claims in the north. This way, if a center of reformation spawns towards the north, I have the ability to start claiming in that direction from up here. As far as Venice is concerned, though, I'm not actually taking any land from them. Instead, I'm taking a little bit of money, but I'm making them release everything I possibly can. So there's three tags up here in northern Italy. I'm giving them back the stuff for Milan. I'll talk about Milan in a second, and I'm making them give up Dalmatia. All of this is because, again, they can join the Empire, either peacefully or by force once I get one more reform. Now, Milan, as you can see here, has a new ruler. The way the Milan succession event happens, when the starter ruler dies, if he doesn't have a 16-year-old heir, or I believe it's an heir with a strong claim. I'm not sure which it is there. But I know it's at least 16 years old. You get the event. He died when she was 16. So I can't get Milan in this game. But it is what it is. In either case, and I still don't have Hungary yet. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making him step down. Because he's been around long enough. I do not have to worry about Bohemia being a problem. And quite frankly, I need to get Hungary at this point. Because, well... 
it's kind of becoming a problem. So, oh, nice. Good air. Now that I have this guy here, I'll be able to hopefully get the rest of the people nearby to join the Empire, boosting this up pretty quickly. And let's just start clicking through some missions here, just because now that they're done, I can move on. And this will give you claims down here as well, allowing you to go after Bosnia, which doesn't really have any decent allies, allowing me to start expanding into this area as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because I need to get start getting ready to go after the Ottomans, and I do not believe... I mean, Poland's willing to come in, and so is Castile, making it a very easy fight. But I do want to have more control of the Balkans before I get there. So, I'll do that, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Welcome back, everybody. So I realized I forgot to talk about this. Specifically, I recommend taking representatives of the crown as Austria. The reason why is this will make it so you get more of the tax income from your vassals. You have to realize... Tags have an extra ducat of tax income base from their just existing. So by using this, you will eventually have many, many, many vassals in the HRE all throwing tax money at you. In the meantime, the extra diplomatic relation means that you're not going to be losing diplo points anymore and you can have more friends. And then finally, the extra vassal force contribution limit means you have a stronger army yourself while making your vassals slightly weaker, but you want to have your own troops as opposed to theirs. So it does make your life just a little bit easier. Now, obviously, they do have this now where you can take strong duchies even if they're personal unions, so pick that up so you can keep these guys under control a lot easier, and it will reduce them quite substantially. With that being said, time to go after Bosnia, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. So uh, apparently there's things I need to learn because they flipped Republic because apparently it's not just tied to the first starting ruler I thought it was but either way Milan I am now able to go after them and make them into a personal union if I really want to and it shouldn't be that big of a deal but at the same time I'm not sure if I actually want to do it I might do so if I end up taking out one of the electors so I can make him an elector and then go personal union him but I wasn't prepared for that, so I'm probably not going to do it. Just want to point out that I was wrong, because I'm sure somebody would tell me in the comments. Either way, moving on, let me go ahead and get ready to fight the Ottomans, because now that I have Serbia, because I conquered this area, and then I re-released them as subjects, they now have reconquest on the Ottomans, though I am waiting for Castile to be done with their second war, because apparently, them fighting Naples, it's a bit too much for them to handle at the same time. So I'll be dealing with that in a minute, and then I'll go after the Ottomans, so I'll see you soon. Welcome back, everybody. So as you can see, the Ottomans are having a very bad day. Now, the reason why I wanted to break in here is not because I wanted to show you what I'm doing to the Ottomans, because this is just pretty simple. I've let my allies take care of things, and I'm just guarding the crossing while they're coming around the back end. No, instead, what I wanted to do is talk about France. You see, France can ally the Ottomans through an event, and as you can see here, they did mid-war. So, what happens? This event can only fire after Austria, through its own and its subject's development, surpassed 750. In other words, it can only really fire once you have both Bohemia and Hungary under your control. So once that happens, you want to be able to get into a war with the Ottomans. The mean time to happen to this is 100 months. If you're at war with the Ottomans for three years, they can't really call in any further allies at that point. Meaning that the event can fire while you're at war with the Ottomans, but they can't actually call the French in to help them out. Meaning you can break this alliance and they won't get it again. So if you simply time it correctly... Knowing you've hit the 750, it's time to attack the Ottomans and not have it fire before then, you're fine. You'll get away with it. Now, if France does end up joining because it fires within that three-year time period, make sure that you have the capacity of turning around and fighting them as well, just to knock them out of the war. In this case, considering the fact of how many people are against the Ottomans, if France joined, it really wouldn't have changed anything. All it would have done is made us have to go over there, knock them out, and then come back and deal with the Ottomans again. So in this game, I'm going to go ahead and let this keep going, but I am going to take these two bits of land here. I can't really afford to take these two, 
but at least being on the other side here will allow me to hand this land over and then the Latin Empire can go ahead and hold on to it so that way I'll be able to quickly cross over in the future but just gotta let this play itself out while I slowly have my allies siege them and I'm just simply guarding this side of the channel if for whatever reason they can't really take care of the Ottomans enough I don't really mind just piecing out and not taking this stuff over here but with that being said see you guys in a bit what's up everybody so i'm giving away a second cd key this week and it is for the game unpacking if you want a copy of this game leave a comment below that just contains the word unpacking somewhere in the comment and at the end of the week i'll go through all the comments anyone that does contain the word unpacking i'll pick one of those at random and reply to it with a cd key for the game obviously anybody else can see these cd keys so make sure you turn on your notifications because if i pick yours and somebody else sees it first and claims it it's their game not yours with that being said, let's get back to the guide. And welcome back, everybody. So after waiting for the fort to fall, I realized, yeah, I can take some slightly different things. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that allows me to then release the Latin Empire back into the world, and I'll give them the straight crossing. So I can, you know, not have to worry about it, not have to core it, but not also have to worry about the Ottoman Navy. While I was in that war, I am starting to build up a fleet though specifically I'm just starting off with 10 galleys because I don't exactly have a whole lot of sailors but this will allow me to start using the newly acquired imperial authority that I have to start spreading specifically once I pass this reform which I'm going to do in a minute I'll be able to start adding anybody that borders the empire that isn't massive into the empire including all these smaller guys Dalmatia which will allow my two subjects here to be added Albania etc so I'm going to be working on that. Now obviously, I don't want to lose all this extra Imperial Authority. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to use the Macro Builder here, and I'm going to bestow Imperial Grace on anybody that might be perturbed by my existence. Specifically Bohemian and Elector. I want them to vote for me, and this will help make sure that that happens. Because there's nothing more annoying than somehow losing the Emperorship just because somebody was a little mad with you. Not even massively, but just a little bit, so they suddenly don't vote for you. So, once I have all the electors on my side again, or at least more on my side, and I'm down to about 51 or 52, I'll be able to move on. But I want to go after the people that are Italian culture and anybody towards the French side of things. Why? Because they're mainly the ones I'm going to be using this war goal on, and by focusing on them, and keeping their opinion high, I'll be able to avoid a lot of the problems of aggressive expansion because this war goal does still cause some aggressive expansion. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get this taken care of. So let's go ahead and do the Pope. Need a diplomat first. And then a couple more points. And then I can pass this reform, there we go. And then I should have war goals to expand it to other people nearby. So let's go ahead and let it just update. Come on. There we go. So obviously I do need to wait until my truce is up, but once it is, I'm able to start expanding. Now let's talk about France. You see, if you got Burgundy like I did, I got him in the middle of the war, you will have claims to go after France at this point. So go ahead and use them and just crush France again, keep them in their place and use it as an opportunity to expand and release more tags into the world. The reason why is pretty obvious. You don't get anything unless they join willingly or you force them into the HRE. If you make them a vassal and they join, you don't really get any, any Imperial authority. So doing this way, you're trying to spike your way through these reforms before the Reformation even starts. So I'm going to go ahead and fight France. See you guys in a bit, though this is not exactly a real fight. Welcome back, everybody. So it's time to talk about the last thing for this guide, and that's the Reformation. As you can see, it's 1515, and yes, it's been that long. It's been a while since I brought you guys back, because it took a while for it to spawn in this game for whatever reason. But as you can see, it did spawn in Brandenburg, it spawned in Sweden, and it also spawned down here in Avern. Now, I took out the Avern one just out of reflex before I realized, oh yeah, I need to actually talk about that. So here we go. 
if it spawns on a person's capital and they're less than I believe it's 200 development or it might be a hundred you're allowed to enforce religion on them and flip them back to Catholicism by doing so as you saw down here in Avern it destroys the center of reformation if it's not on a capital though you have to manually convert it so since this one here is not on the capital which is Berlin I have to take these provinces and then manually convert the one that's here the problem doing so is that it gives them a negative 5% conversion strength when you're trying to get rid of a center of reformation and then if you do not embrace the culture of that province it'll cost an extra 2% from there and then you get penalties for the amount of development so how would I deal with this well first things first I would take both of these provinces and I would focus development to drop this one as low as possible I would even burn some development because every amount helps as you can see right here it just increases at basically 0.1% for every development and every 0.1% counts next you just need 20 development of whatever culture the province is to embrace that culture in here so keep one slot open so you can embrace whatever it happens to be on in this case Saxon and you just need the 20 development now in this case this has 15 this has 9 so I could embrace Saxon first but again I'm going to focus development out of it and pull it out so because of that I might have to develop it don't develop it wherever the center of reformation is develop it in another province if it is one province next to you take it and take one other province so that if you need to develop you can develop the other province because it will be less annoying for you to do so after that you have this modifier here active uniformity which is just one of these decisions that you can get in there the other one is I'm trying to remember what it's called the heretico combrandio act that'll give you another 0.5 and then you have in here enforce unity of faith religious culture that's 1% each then you have this guy here which is 2% and then you have the edict which is another 1% which if you're keeping track would make you about six and a half percent me allowing you to convert this province just barely if you uh, concentrate development out of that province and then torch some tax development so make sure that you do so just to allow you to be able to convert it out of that because it's not on a capital now I do want to point out that in this game Brandenburg is Protestant there is an achievement though I'm not gonna scroll through here to find it where basically you can get it as either being the Emperor or being the Pope and having the Pope be a elector in the HRE that has Catholicism as the dominant faith the thing is that this has to be after the League war has fired or at least the leagues have formed in order for the leagues to form an elector must be Protestant so if you need that achievement leave Brandenburg Protestant and spend your time before the leagues would form because no one else should be flipping Protestant if you take out the centers spend that time crippling England Muscovy the Ottomans Poland whoever might betray you and help the Protestants to fight you because if it's just a bunch of small guys in the HRE helping Brandenburg who generally they won't help him because they're gonna be Catholic you're just gonna steamroll the Protestants and you're gonna get the achievement if you already have the achievement or you don't care go ahead and flip Brandenburg back at some point but it's not realistically gonna matter now in this game because I have Bohemia and it is Brandenburg I just told them to fabricate a claim up here but obviously they haven't done so yet if that is the case use this northern province here to fabricate a claim here and then here using the claims bordering claims splendor bonus you have from the age of discovery so pay attention to when the age of discovery is ending because that means the Protestants have arrived allowing you to then focus where they are at get the claims down and go after them and since you have four diplomats you can just spy on a bunch of people and just drop them really quick to get where you need to go to either attack them or an ally to be able to enforce religion or at least steal that province that you actually need after you've done that and you've taken out the Reformation there's really nothing stopping you from eventually just revoking the privilegia 
but I do want to point out that your biggest problem is realistically going to be Great Britain until you actually do revoke the Privilegia because you don't have a whole lot of sailors. So being able to use the Netherlands up here as Burgundy or integrating Burgundy or whatever will make your life easier, if only so you can get a navy large enough to at least distract Britain long enough to land enough troops to fight them on their mainland. And once you're there, just take stuff in Ireland, use Ireland as a base, let them cross over, fight them, blockade it, they'll end up getting stack wiped over and over until eventually they have no troops, and then you just walk over and take them out. As far as everyone else, you will eventually be able to break Castile, you'll eventually be able to take on Poland, because you get a personal union war goal on Poland, so you can just easily take them out. But Castile, just like uh, most other tags in the start of the game, starts off with a bunch of cores throughout their land, especially in Aragon, that are going to be around for a long time. So if you want to, you can take advantage of that to expand Empire into Iberia as well. As far as the Ottomans, you can do that to about here. This line here is where Europe generally ends. It's actually a little bit further east. But you'll be able to expand to all the tags that happen to be in the Ottomans as well, allowing you to get plenty of imperial authority growth. And then, of course, you can do it into about this far into Muscovy, allowing you to get the Livonian Order, Karelia, Finland, etc., now, Denmark, I will warn you, because of Denmark's amount of development, though they seem small, they are still too large. So as to lose down here, so just be aware, you won't be able to get everybody. Lastly, I will point out that I do have Bosnia, Serbia. I did have Wallachia as a vassal. I just released them from being a vassal. Yes, it takes up 25 prestige, but as you can tell, not having a prestige problem. This will free up your diplomatic relations slots because they'll be in the empire, and you can, right before you let them go, enforce religion on them, which will spike their liberty desire, and then you can let them go once they are rebellious, and they will have high opinion of you, allowing you to keep passing reforms, because they won't be the wrong religion, and they won't hate you, which means they shouldn't fight you too much in this stuff. Now, I do want to talk one last thing, just because it's something people focus on that really doesn't matter. Simply put, it's focusing on the wrong modifiers when it comes to Imperial Authority growth. Specifically, I see people focus on the free city growth and trying to upgrade this monument in Ulm all the time. It's 7,500 ducats to get 20% growth on your Imperial Authority from free cities. If you do the math, that's about 7,500 ducats for 0 0.02 monthly Imperial Authority. It flat out just doesn't matter. Don't spend the money on this. Spend it on Prague, because that's a flat increase, which will almost double the amount of Imperial Authority growth I get overall. Obviously, crush the Reformation in its cradle, because that is really painful. But other than that, the best advice I can give you is, during this game, use your diplomats. Because there was a lot of times I just had diplomats sitting there, constantly fabricating claims throughout the Empire. The reason why is once you have claims bordering claims, you can obviously stretch them throughout the empire and use them as a means to make other tags constantly spit out whoever they've conquered. In this case, such as Brunswick, not only can I make him spit out Lunenburg, but also Kallenberg. I can make Lubeck spit out Mecklenburg, Wolgast, Rugen, and Holstein meaning I suddenly have four more tags, all of which should normally be Catholic, which would probably give me an extra 0.02 on its own, without any investment from me, and I could probably even get some money out of it too. So try and use that as a way to attack people and keep other tags in the game, in the HRE, and independent, because as long as you can do that, you're going to increase your Imperial Authority growth enough to be able to keep passing reforms. The last thing I wanted to point out is simply a mechanic that I playtested the moment I saw it as an option, and it sucks. It's not worth it. And I just want to wave people off from that. Specifically, going the mercenary influence path, you get the ability to create client states. As I said before, you get imperial authority growth by having them be Catholic and being a tag in the HRE. So instead of, say, taking Hungary as a personal union, 
if you spent your time conquering that land and then release a client state here and here and here and here so there is one extra province between them and another person they would then be in the empire they would then be contributing to the monthly tick of imperial authority growth and while this can work it's generally not worth it because you're giving up hungary helping you which can help you stop france help you stop the ottomans help you stop poland and it's just not worth it in the long run but if you want to focus on playing very tall and letting other people continue so you can get the you can revoke the privilege and then go after france completely viable I just didn't, didn't find it fun, didn't find it worthwhile. So it's up to you what you choose to do. But with that being said, that's basically all you guys need to know to play Austria. I know it's a lot of information, but it's actually pretty fun and pretty easy. This is a pretty laid back campaign because you have such strong friends. There's not really a whole lot of people that can really stand up to you. And by the time somebody is like, say, a Russia, you're going to have pretty much the revel the privilege you revoke and then Russia is just going to get ripped apart but thank y'all for watching i hope y'all enjoyed it if you did like and subscribe i will be continuing to make guides but have a wonderful week